The part of Pierce Riley is being played by Greg Wrangler. Are you catering? You're early. Yeah. What's all this? Uh, flashback to an awkward, shy 17-year-old trimming Phoebe's hedges by the south lawn. Around the pool. Now my favorite spot. You see, it always had the best uh, view. You in a bikini. So what does that have to do with tonight? With tonight? Well, tonight, a young man's fantasy finally comes true. A romantic picnic on the south lawn with the incredibly sexy Brooke English. Just the two of us oh. under the stars. That is so sweet. <laughs> Topped off by a midnight swim. Without the bikini, I hope. <laughs> Does Phoebe still heat the pool early? Mm, first sign of spring. Well then. I guess we're all set. It sounds very wicked. <laughs> I also have your favorite wine. Oh. A couple of old-fashioned turkey sandwiches. Plenty of towels. What else do we need? Better timing. I'm so sorry. I really am. I have to cancel our date. Cancel? Why? I... I just want to have some time with Laura. <sighs> That's a great idea, but I... I want her to feel more like she has a sense of stability. You know, like she feels comfortable around me. Before you break us on her. Yeah. I told her that I went to, to Tad's to pick up Jamie. Oh, she's here. Here, come see me. I'm sure you'd want to see me. Are you okay? Are we? Always. Well, I know I laid into you pretty good about Janet. Well, you were freaked out about a lot of things. I know you guys weren't trashing her. Hey, I would never do or say anything to hurt you. I know that. I just went off. I wasn't thinking. Forget it. So, how's school? Tough, but I'll deal. Have you lined up any tutors? Some, but my head's just not really there right now. So how do we get it there? Put our family back together. I'm sorry, that wasn't fair. Oh, it's okay, you were being honest. Laura, things can't ever go back to the way they were last summer. Maybe it's better if you just look at that time for what it was. It was perfect. You know, back in, in one of the rat traps, me and my mom crashed in. I knew this girl named Ginny. She was even poorer than we were, but it was like she didn't know it. Her old man used to check her homework every night. Her mom would walk her to school in the morning. In most ways, her life was just as regular as the kids I know now. And I never had that. Not not till the cabin. Two people who really cared about me. And we still do. How come the good stuff never lasts? Well, some of it does. Like the way that Janet and I feel about you. It just it freaks me out when stuff just disappears. I gotta blame somebody or something, you know, an, another man or a woman for that matter. I just, I just need to hate somebody. Laura, listen. I'm so sorry if I hurt you. Janet and I, we, we love you so much. You're such a big part of my life. No matter where I live, I'm always gonna be there for you. And that is never gonna change. Promise? I promise.
it blows my mind that she's even still talking to me. Uh, that handprint was like just the symbol of her daughter. Anybody else probably would have smacked me. <laughs> but not Brooke. She put my feelings first. And what'd she say? That I turned her life around. <laughs> Pretty weird, huh? Upside down, I would have understood. Well, maybe you came into Brooke's life at just the right time. Yeah. It's got to be tough being successful, beautiful, and rich. Uh, you never know what's inside of people. I remember once upon a time there was a recluse who lived out in the woods with no friends and no family. And then one day, he finds this angry kid and magically they connect. And somehow he learns how to live again. So you think maybe Brooke needs me? Yeah, I do. Dinner. I I forgot. I I gotta get back. She's expecting me for dinner. Well, I'm glad to stop by. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thanks. Okay. You know you're not too bad at this old man stuff. Are you sure you haven't got a couple of kids stashed away somewhere? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay. You heard? Yeah, I heard. Enough. You feel better about tonight? Yeah. Go have dinner. Okay. Did I ever tell you how unselfish women really turn me on? No. <laughs> but I'll, uh, I'll have to remember that. I better go. Get done with the meeting. Um, I'll be in production. Okay. I don't want to chase you out of your own office. No. No, I, uh, I have a meeting. Huh. Bye. How are you? That's a loaded question. Go ahead. I'm ready. For what? My lecture. Something about nuking the nuclear family or dumping upheaval all over Jamie's life, you know, being irresponsible, stupid, self-centered. Actually, I was just going to ask you if Jamie could have dinner with Laura and me tonight. That's it? Yeah, how about it? Well, I know he'd love it. Uh, it's just that, uh, considering everything that's happened, I kind of need to be with him. I was going to do the father-son thing tonight, you know, pizza and soda in front right. of Right, so why don't you come along with him? It'll be, it'll be great for Jamie, it'll be good for Laura. Nice family dinner, conversation, distractions. Hmm? You, you're sure? Yeah, it'll be fun. Okay, I'll bring the, uh, the kid in the wine. How's that sound? Perfect. Eight? Eight. Okay. I'll be there. Brooke. Hmm. Thanks for not jumping on me. I'm out of the lecture business. Who am I to judge? As always, you stand alone. What are you doing? We want out of here, right? Doing now? Oh, I'm about to apply my infamous brute force. You're not going to break down that door. Yeah, I'm going to give it the old college try. Oh, you're as crazy as Opal. <sighs> Solid oak. Yeah, like your head. Reinforced hinges. 
Yeah, well, you know, I think if I get the momentum going, I hit it right on the right angle, it'll give way. Or you could break your shoulder and then where would I be? Opal, this is your last chance, Opal, to open this door. If you don't open this door, Opal, I swear I'm going to tell Palmer. Well, I don't know what I'm going to tell him, but I'm going to make up something. Opal! Opal! Erica, just stand back and let the master at it. Well, be careful. to knock the damn door down. Well, what did that poor innocent little door ever do to you? The door was locked. Well, I was going to let you out sooner or later. I was just waiting for it to get nice and quiet in here. I guess my plan was a bust. Oh, there, did you hear what she said? Her plan. Her plan. I told you I had nothing to do with this French linen closet farce. Yeah, I got the idea from a Doris Day Rock Hudson picture, you know, where Doris plays an uh, interior decorator and Rock is this fast and loose playboy type. And, well, anywho, it's a oh, great well, picture. Oh, this is the lamest idea you have ever oh, had. Oh, you're just mad because you didn't think of it first. Life is not a Doris Day movie. Well, maybe it should be. I mean, Dodo gets to wear all those drop-dead gorgeous gowns by John Louie, and she's then shuttled back and forth between Cary Grant and Rock Hudson, and she's kind to strays. If you ask me, the world would be a much better place if everybody would just kiss and make up and say, move over, darling. Yes, well, uh, I would like to inform you, <laughs> Opal, that uh, for one stupid stunt, you get one thumb down. Two thumbs down. Oh. If you'll excuse me. <sighs> well, looks like intermission, so what happened in the first reel? You blew it, that's what happened, Opal. Well, excuse me for living, I was just trying to help. Well, if you really wanted to help, you would have locked that door and thrown away the key. 